Brian Castrucci, thank you. This was fascinating. At the end of the focus group, all 19 were more confident about the vaccine than when they started. He's talking about the focus group I featured in the previous video. The 12 Trump voters in that focus group said they were more likely to get the vaccine after listening to what Dr. Frieden had said. So if you don't want to listen to what Trump said, you can skip that part of the video and listen to what the doctor told that focus group. You may or may not like what Trump said or what the doctor or Chris Christie says, but I'm just reporting what they said. So don't fault the video. Don't give the video a thumbs down vote because you don't like what they're saying. I'm just reporting what they're saying, so don't take it out on the video. After that focus group, Frank Luntz interviewed that doctor again. Here's more of what he had to say. Tom Frieden knows more about the science and the medicine than any other person I've ever worked with, and it's intimidating to work with him because I only know politics, or I only know language. And I don't know one-tenth of what he knows. So I'm going to give you the ch chance to correct the mistakes that have been put out there that people may be seeing on the web, they may be seeing on cable news. First is understand about the variants. And the more uncontrolled spread there is anywhere, the more likely it will be that variants will develop resistance to vaccine. Um, and uh, the the more likely that, that we're going to have real problems. So first is variants are a huge risk. I'm not saying they're definitely going to destroy our ability to control it, but they're a huge risk. We need to help stop the COVID-19 pandemic by getting as many people vaccinated as fast as we can. It's mutated. Which way, better or worse? The longer it takes to get people to be vaccinated, the more time the vaccine has to mutate into a variant that could be even worse. Um, the variants are a huge risk. And what we're seeing in Brazil today scares me because what it looks like is uh, you got infected before, the variant came along, you're getting infected again. Um, that didn't happen before. That didn't happen with other variants. But as more people get immune, there's more pressure, selective pressure to the virus. The same is true for the vaccine. You, you can say, you know, it looks like the mRNA vaccines at least work pretty well against the variants. They work pretty well against these variants. So the, the, why is that important, Frank, and everybody? It's important because we have no guarantee that there will be a one and done ending to this pandemic. Um, we, we may be dealing with a cat and mouse kind of catching up, keeping up with the variants. The more uncontrolled spread there is anywhere, the more likely it will be that variants will develop resistance to the vaccine. One disinformation argument is the mRNA vaccine, that it changes DNA. Why is this not true? So Frank, Frank and I have discussed this before. You know, the mRNA vaccine, think of it like an email sent to every one of your immune cells showing it a most wanted picture of what the... COVID virus looks like, and a set of instructions in how to kill it, and then, boop, like a disappearing message, it disappears. That's what the mRNA technology does. It does not change your DNA. What it does is it primes your immune system in the same way that the uh, virus infection itself would prime your immune system. Basically, it's doing what the virus would do if it infected you, but in a much more targeted way, and Actually, a more robust way. Here's something I got wrong in, in early in this, uh, in, in some of my comments. I said, you know, natural immunity is better than vaccine-induced immunity, um, that we, we're not going to do better than Mother Nature. Um, and this is one of the reasons we haven't been able to make a good vaccine against malaria, TB, or AIDS, or HIV. We don't have good natural immunity to them, and therefore, it's hard to emulate that with a vaccine. Turns out, I asked Paul Offit, who's like the number one expert in vaccines, he says, no, actually, tetanus vaccine, the conjugated haemophilus vaccines, the conjugated pneumococcal vaccines, those all create better immune reactions than natural infection. And it does appear that mRNA's uh, protective efficacy is even stronger than natural effect infection, but it's not as broad. So as I said to Frank's group, if you get infected with uh, the virus, it's going to spread all over your body for about 10 days, billions and billions of copies of it. And you might have long-term complications from it. Um, 
if you get the vaccine, it will be gone from your body within a day or two, and it will have taught your body how to respond. I'll tell you one thing, we are right at the tipping point from not having enough vaccine to not having enough arms. The numbers that are looking good, and this is how we're gonna beat variants is with a vaccine. Uh, the numbers that are looking good, they have a high risk of plateauing. We're at 2 million a day, that's fantastic but we're running out of people who are eager to get vaccinated. And so we're going to need multiple platforms to get people vaccinated, including pharmacies, including community sites, including health departments, and including doctor's offices. And that's what we learned from flu. The group that is most likely to behave badly and most likely to be skeptical are your 20-somethings. And they're, they are carriers. How do you move them from bad behavior to at least getting the vaccine so they are less likely to spread the virus? Right. We, you know, they're called the invincibles, right? Because they think they're invincible. Um, I think one of the things that really made a difference with tobacco is when you show young people, the same demographic, uh, who are suffering, who are disabled or disfigured. So I think long haulers, telling their story is going to be very motivating. It gets back to that risk benefit ratio. Yes, it's absolutely true that most people are gonna do fine with this virus, but some people aren't, and they're gonna be suffering for a long time. And so get a shot, what's the big deal? And the J&J &J shot as a single dose is probably gonna be much more appealing to people than a two dose series. Um, so that's important. Um, I think also making it easy, pretty soon we're gonna think of things like, you know, set up outside of the supermarket and offer to anyone who wants it, who's walking in uh, as the J&J &J vaccine so that you can get a lot of people vaccinated at once. And, and really, uh, convenience overcomes reluctance a lot of the time. Primary health care. This is probably my, my leading lesson from the past year. I always knew it was important, but you know something? We really mess up in how we structure our health care system. Primary care doctors, clinicians, have to be at the center if we want to actually really improve health. If we want to find things fast, vaccinate everyone in their doctor's office, we have to change the way primary care works. Third, global. We cannot go it alone. Anywhere there's uncontrolled spread, we're at risk. And that's why my group, Resolve to Save Lives, works in global health. I'll stop there. Oh, and in fact, I actually need to jump because I'm doing a CNN interview and they're calling me right now about our focus group on, on Saturday. So Tom, thank you very much for doing this. Appreciate it. All the best. Everyone, Sorry I couldn't you. get everyone's questions. All the best. Thank you.